a mm-hmm. sinister plot by a very small group of people. Um, basically, J.P. Morgan. Hello, everyone. Today, our guest is famous investor, former hedge fund manager and Morgan Creek Digital CEO Mark Yusko, who in this video goes on to explain the real picture of the current market outlook of Bitcoin, crypto, stocks, and analyzes the Fed's creation history among many topics. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. The next crypto bull market will start sooner than most people think, according to Mark Yusko, founder and CEO of Morgan Creek Capital Management. Yusko thinks the next crypto bull run, or as he calls it, the crypto summer, could kick off as soon as the second quarter of this year due to the combination of more dovish central bank policies and the anticipation of the Bitcoin. While the United States Federal Reserve is unlikely to cut interest rates anytime soon, according to Yusko, the markets tend to anticipate the Fed's decisions. That means even a slowing down or a pause in interest rate hikes would be interpreted as the signal of an imminent pivot. That would spark a positive dynamic among all risk assets, including crypto. As long as the asset liability match is okay, it it, it can be okay. And what I mean by that is if you have short-term debt, like you have a, if you have a loan to a bank that they can call any time and you buy a long-term asset, that's a bad trade. That's, no that's called an asset liability mismatch and yeah, you're going to no lose good. every single time. And, and that's why, again, your instincts are perfect. Leverage can never make a bad investment good. Not ever. It can, and unfortunately often does, make a good investment bad. Well, why does it make a good investment bad? Because it, you get forced to sell at the Correct. wrong time, at the wrong margin time. call. But yeah. here's what what Sailor did that that is is not the dumbest thing in the world. He issued long duration bonds with zero interest, so he doesn't have to pay people anything to borrow their money, which is pretty okay. amazing when you can do that. And there's no call, right? They can't call it back and say you have to pay me back and go sell your Bitcoin. Because he's got a long enough time horizon on those bonds, he can handle the volatility of the price if we all believe, as we do, that the long-term price will be higher than the short-term price. That's the only way that leverage can make sense. Now, I will still argue that you're right, that he's probably on the edge of how much leverage is appropriate. The, the thing I disagree with him, and I don't like to disagree with him because I, I agree with most of what he says, and I think he's a good spokesperson. When he said you should mortgage your house and go buy Bitcoin, right? right. that was bad advice. It's 247 now because 2023. Um, we've had half of all the dollars printed in the last two plus years. So if you think about it, what should have happened to assets priced in dollars. Like if I priced my house in houses, it would have been flat, right? If my house price was at 2121 North Lakeshore Drive, that 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 price would have been flat. But I don't price it in house units, I price it in dollars. So it went up. Hmm, that's interesting. How about Bitcoin? One Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. No, Mark, no, what Bitcoin is, is, is you know, $21,000, no, no. One Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, but we don't price Bitcoin in Bitcoin. We price Bitcoin in dollars or yen or euros or right. pesos or lira. Here's a funny and fact. I don't know if we'll ever price it against itself. You know, Do you? Only, like, I, I see those tweets and I, I get, Yeah. I, I don't like that saying one Bitcoin is one. And I always hear when we're in the bear market. I've been through a few of them now, Mark. And when it's down and out, I know in crypto Twitter, I see one Bitcoin equal one Bitcoin. I say, oh, we're in the bear market. I don't don't mean that as as proof that it's not volatile. What I mean is it's like a bar of gold. Mm -hmm. A bar of gold is a bar of gold. Right. It's not two bars of gold. It's not half a bar of gold. It's a bar of gold. Mm -hmm. And I can't break it in half and give you half of it. Right. I'm strong enough to do that. 
I guess I could melt it down and, and make coins out of it or something. But but a bar of gold is a bar of gold. But we don't price gold in gold. We price gold in other currencies. And this is this is the key that for 5,000 years, it's a long time, right? 5,000 years. So since Cleopatra's time, a fine person's suit to a suit of armor from medieval times to one a ounce suit, ago. suit in 1920 to Savile Row today, one ounce will buy you a fine person suit. It's a yeah, perfect store value. Over all that's those true. centuries, all the currencies that came and went, perfect store value. Now, Bitcoin is simply digital gold in the sense that it I agree. is a perfect store of value. And the reason one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, like gold, we know how much there is, right? We know how many bars. In fact, better than gold, we know precisely with precision for the next 140 years how many Bitcoin there will be. It was a sinister, and I, I use that term intentionally, mm -hmm. a sinister plot by a very small group of people. Um, basically, J.P. Morgan, John D. Rockefeller, uh, who was the son-in-law of Amory Aldrich, and Amory Aldrich was really the architect. In fact, there's another amazing book that no one's read. Uh, it was written in 1910, while the whole Aldrich plan was being created. Because what happened is in, in 1907, there were a number of trust companies that were popping up in the United States that were competing to be new financial institutions. And J.P. Morgan didn't like that. His famous quote is, I like a little competition. And this company, Knickerbocker Trust, was stealing all I've heard of that. Yeah. yeah. And so, as tough guys are prone to do, um, he spread some rumors, perhaps false, that Knickerbocker Trust was insolvent. Insolvent, and right? If you go yeah. to Wiki and look up Bank Run, that's the bank run, right? Right. right. That's where I knew that. That's okay. the famous picture yeah, of the yeah, guys yeah, yeah. in their top hats and the women in dresses and the umbrellas mm -hmm. and they're standing outside the bank. That was the bank run. And JP Morgan and his friend John D. Rockefeller said, Ah, oh, we'll save you. 25 million bucks, which back then was a lot of money. They pledged 25 million of their personal money to backstop the banks. Literally, like the scene in It's a Wonderful Life where Mr. Potter is bailing out the bank and the guy's dotting his brow and you know they're calling the building <laughs> loan to say hey we'll, we'll we'll save your guys too and they're like no you're not stealing our, our business so from that point from 1907 to 1913 they hatched this plan called the aldrich plan to create a central bank that ostensibly would stop these bank runs no, 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 no. What it did is it gave non-federal power to create money. And Thomas Jefferson said this very clearly in the 1790s. He said, look, if the American people ever allow banks to issue currency, they will wind up penniless and homeless on the shores of the country that their forefathers founded. Powerful stuff from 1790s. The reason Jamie Dimon says it's a fraud, the reason Warren Buffett says it's like, you know, rat poison squared, the reason Charlie Munger one-upped him and said it's like trading newly harvested dead baby brains. <laughs> really scares me. Oh, they say God. that because 46% of Berkshire Hathaway is financial services. Yeah. And Wells Fargo days of charging egregious fees to steal money from clients, which they just got convicted of recently, or JP Morgan's days of spoofing the price of gold so and paying funny. a billion dollar fine. It's so funny you mentioned that Wells Fargo thing, because I brought it up in yesterday's stream on Around the Blockchain and said, honestly, guys, uh, Wells Fargo is worse than FTX, if you ask me. Oh, they've, orders they've, of they've, magnitude worse. <laughs> okay, exactly. I mean, look, here's the and, thing. I mean, how is that not, like, they should be shut down. And I used to, used to word the, use the word cabal, but I didn't realize that that was a trigger word for the Jewish population. So I, I don't use that anymore. They said, I should oh, Wait a minute, it, it is? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. I, I oh, had no God. idea that was a trigger word 
for, and someone called me an anti-Semite. I'm like, what are you talking about? It just, it's a word I thought meant, you know, a small group of people. I'm like, no, no. Off police, a, man. We're going gonna, gonna, gonna to have like three words we can use in a minute, Mark. We're going to only have three words. No, no, no but, but someone said you should use cartel. I'm like, well, then I'm just going to offend a bunch of people in Latin America. Mex so, exactly. So anyway, I'm going to offend somebody. But the point is that... <laughs> Banking and finance has been run by a very small number of families for 800 years. Mm -hmm. And they really like controlling it. And But it's over. And mm -hmm. what, what Bitcoin does... How long do you think it's going to take? Honestly. I mean, it's going to take decades. Another 50 years? Yeah. yeah it's going to take decades. Yeah. But, but it's not going to take centuries. It's going to take decades. Besides the Fed's more dovish policies, the anticipation of the Bitcoin halving, which is due to take place in the second quarter of next year, will also drive bullish sentiment in the market. The market always anticipates the halving. Nine months before that is usually when the beginning of summer starts, Yasko said. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.